Hey, welcome everybody. Coach Rob here. We're going to get a good look at Zwift for the iOS. We're going to take a look at how this works. So, somehow I managed to leave my USB cables at home when I'm traveling uh, for the holidays. So, we're going to actually um, take a look at using the iOS program here and uh, we're going to give it a good look. So, right now I'm going to be connecting via Bluetooth here. So, I can actually search by tapping on a power source here. So I logged in, and now I can search by tapping on a, on a device. Okay, cool. I have devices here. I have my stages power meter. So I can hit that, and that'll pair it up. I do have a controllable um, trainer with me as well. I'm using my... Um, uh, this is a... Uh, Elite Drivo trainer. Um, and there you will be able to see as I start spinning this, it'll take a minute, but it'll pop up and I can hit uh, that particular trainer. Um, I believe that's actually the trainer. Don't, I don't think it's the same one that comes by USB, but okay. So I'm going to hit that and I'm going to hear the trainer itself calibrate which is a good sign. Uh, my cadence is in my stages unit, which is awesome. So I'm all set to do that. Now, uh, I'm not using a heart rate monitor because I don't have my Bluetooth heart rate monitor with me. So we have two options at the bottom here. We have a let's go option or a just watch option. Um, in this case, I think uh, since I'm going to jump on the trainer in a few minutes and this is just a pretty quick you know, heads up uh, video, then we're just going to go with a let's go. Now, this is going to be a pretty easy, um, pretty easy free training uh, course. Today, it looks like we are in Watopia. It looks like we're in Watopia. And we're just going to set the route for Surprise Me. And we're going to, wait a minute, this doesn't look like, we're going to just hit ride. I'm looking at the background here and I'm thinking this, this doesn't look like Watopia to me, but supposedly, oh wait, it's Friday, that's why. <laughs> so yeah, on Friday, um, on Friday we're in London. So as I, we pop it up here, you can see we are riding in London. All right. So if I'm going to hop on here. I'm going to start doing a little bit of easy pedaling. Now there's going to be a little lag between the recording software and the Zwift app, it looks like, if it actually runs. Which, it's not going anywhere. So, um, alright. That doesn't work out very well. Alrighty then, that's that's great. So we're gonna jump back on there. We're gonna hit our menu, see if we can figure out why we're not going anywhere. And we're gonna see if we can actually get something going. Why is none of this working? None of this is working. All right, let's pop this sucker up. Let's see what we got going on. Uh, oh, yeah, no signal from the stages. So let's um, let's repair this. Now it looks like it's working, and uh, let's back off here and let's see. If we start pedaling, yeah, now we got some power going. We got a little bit of power going. All right, cool. It's reading cadence. It's reading some power. Awesome. And it's adjusting slowly, I can see. All right. All right. So 
So there is a little bit of lag on this uh, particular um, particular screen here. What you're going to hear is you're going to hear me pedaling, but you're going to see me going nowhere. The reason why you're going to see that is um, there's about 15 seconds worth of lag between my iPad Pro and my laptop, which I'm air mirroring to, airplane mirroring to. So commentary from here on out is going to be on directed on my laptop. So even though you hear me pedaling, I'm not going very far. I'm not going anywhere, actually. Um, I am actually moving on my iPad. So it's worth something worth noting here that the interface on the iPad is really smooth. Um, I, I kind of like it, actually. It's Especially on the Pro, it's really clear. Um, really, really nice looking. Uh, and as you can see, on the recording here, I am actually starting to move now. Um, I'm just going to go real easy here so I can talk it through. <clears throat> yeah, the, the interface is really nice. How well is it going to work um, for a significant effort? Uh, I think it'll be pretty good. I think it'll really work very well. I think the biggest issue you're going to run into with the uh, iPad is the small screen. So unless you're using a, um, what is the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, you're going to be looking at a pretty tiny screen the whole time. <clears throat> and that's kind of a bummer, but, uh, you know, it is better than, than nothing to be really honest with you. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm kind of liking the, I'm kind of liking the whole uh, iPad experience. It's a great way to take your training with you and to really train on the fly. Now, the, uh, the iPad's very portable. The uh, trainer is not so portable. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm using the Elite Drivo. That thing is not portable at all. It's really tough to work with. And uh, I've also mentioned that, or I can also mention too, that um, you have a little limitation in terms of what you can attach to the iPad when you are training on the go. I'm lucky that I'm using a Bluetooth enabled power meter. Um, if you don't have a Bluetooth enabled power meter, you're kind of out of luck. Um, it's not going to be able to connect to your iPad without a dongle, and then that's just more stuff to, you know, to bring with you. So that's kind of a pain in the butt. But um, you know, if you're using a Bluetooth enabled power meter, a Bluetooth enabled trainer, or anything of that nature, you're going to be able to do some really cool Zwift training on the fly. And to be honest with you. That's, uh, that's a really cool concept. So, uh, very, very cool, very neat feature. The iOS feature works really, really nicely. Um, if you have a TV handy and you're not able to hook up to your computer, you can airplay it or mirror it to uh, an actual TV, and that's awesome. But, um, like I said, if you're just working through the iPad, you're going to have a little bit of a issue with the screen. You won't be able to see very much. I'm I'm actually standing about four feet away, and my eyesight's pretty good. And I'm I can't read any of the names on that right hand sidebar. Uh, I can't read times really very well on the um, overall like timer. You know the the, the lap counter there. Um, I also you know I, I it's like I said my eyes are pretty good, but you know, even the mileage, um, the distance, the speed, uh, the elevation, the timer, all that stuff is still a little bit tough to read if you're four or five feet away and you are um, using that, that iPad. Overall impression, I kind of like the ability to take Zwift wherever I want if I don't have my laptop handy. 
and I want to get a workout in. That's the plus side of it. Um, it also looks really nice, at least on the iPad Pro. It looks really nice, i got to be honest. They did a great job. Um, what do I think on the other side of it? Number one, it's going to be a pretty big battery hog. Um, if you're watching at all, I've lost about 4%, 3-4% battery in, uh, I don't know, 4-5 or five minutes. So you might be pretty limited in what you're able to do in terms of training time. Uh, but you can always plug it in. I do have it plugged in, so I'm still losing battery power pretty quick, which I'm not not too psyched about. But um, <clears throat> again, downside: small screen, limited connectivity, no anti connectivity on an iPad, just Bluetooth, and uh, the requirement of really having a smart trainer if you're going to be using that has to be Bluetooth compatible, and, uh, and that's pretty much it. So, impression: would I use it? Sure, I would use it. I like Swift. I like the concept of Swift. Um, I like being able to take my training with me if I need to. Um, I know you can download the your workouts to this. I, I'm not familiar with how. I haven't explored with how. Uh, but again, first time I'm using this, it's just a first impressions here. So, will I use it in the future? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, if I'm traveling, possibly. The biggest problem is taking a Bluetooth trainer with me or taking my trainer with me. As I said, uh, it's an Elite Drivo. It's a huge trainer. Um, I don't know that that would be something I would do in the future. Um, I do have a dumb trainer, which I could take with me, but my speed cadence sensor is not Bluetooth compatible, so I would need a Bluetooth compatible speed and cadence sensor to be able to use that uh, appropriately. Uh, for speed anyway, for power it really wouldn't be much of an issue because again I, I'm wearing, using a stages unit. Um, should you use the iOS app? Again, if you have Bluetooth compatible sensors, sure, go ahead, use the iOS app. If you're running with like an old Quark that only has ANT control, um, you're kind of out of luck unless you have an, an adapter and a dongle. So you can take that as it, as it may. If you happen to have one, go ahead, use the uh, iOS device. I will be honest with you, Zwift does not take a lot of computer power to run. Zwift is a pretty low, um, low resource using program. So unless your machine is really, 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 really old, you shouldn't have any issues. Um, if it is really, 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 really old and you have a new iPad, then by all means, grab that iPad version, grab the iOS version, go to town on it. So, again, Coach Rob from Tailwind Coaching, tailwind-coaching.com. This is just my initial impressions of having used Swift on the iOS for maybe five minutes. And um, overall, I kind of like it. Uh, it's, like I said, limited connectivity, but not a bad thing at all. And a great expansion to the... Uh, Zwift lineup, to be honest with you. Uh, those of you who are puzzled a little bit about the uh, the video feed, um, remember I'm using an Air AirPlay mirroring, and it's uh, way behind. So I apologize for that, but that's the best solution I could work up to get this to actually work for you, and for, to get this to actually happen. So until I talk to you next time, ride fast, ride strong, ride hard. Keep the shiny side up. Keep the rubber side down. And uh, I'll be talking to you real soon.